Hi everyone, welcome back. People have been asking for me to make trigonometry videos. They don't realise I've already got a playlist of about 10. If you go down to where you go down to the sections of my videos, you get down to year 9 and 10, or class 9 and 10, and you'll find trigonometry playlists there on the basics. But this is one I've decided to make, which is specifically revision for an exam or revision for a test that goes through all the possibilities, and one more, just to make it fairly thorough. Um, if you want to support me, one of the ways you can support me is I'm looking for view hours. I'm getting plenty of subscribers, getting lots of lovely comments. Thank you for all your comments, your support has been absolutely wonderful. But if you can get me some view hours, that would be absolutely terrific. So here we go, trigonometry. There are three cases in, tri in trigonometry and people get mixed up between which case to do. I've seen students who understood trig, but then applied the right thing in the wrong case. Now, there are so many ideas, so here's some of the ones I'm going to talk about. I always talk about mini-me, so here's, here's little me here, hopefully that's big enough for you to see. There's mini-me, and I'm looking out across the, across the uh, triangle. So if it was me standing here, and I like to talk about it, like I can look right out my window right here right now, and there's people who are opposite me. And that normal use of the word, just those people are opposite. Now, I've got to think about, some people get this really quick, and they don't need this. They don't need this thorough. I'm talking for the people who really struggle with it. So I'm looking at the people, the other side of the road, so they're called opposite. Now, next to me, I've got people that side right next to me, and their fence is my fence, and they're called adjacent. So they're next to me. So we've got opposite, and we've got next to, or adjacent. So they're just normal words in normal day life. So here's me looking out my window, and I look across the road, and I see the people who are opposite me, and I put OPP for opposite, some people just put an A, but for the moment I'm gonna put OPP. Now here's the people who are next door to me, and so they're called adjacent, which just means next door to me. So the big part, the other one, that's really obvious in the question, most people are okay, that that one there is just called the hypotenuse. So we're looking at this situation where there's nothing written on the hypotenuse, we've got an angle here, we've got something written on the side that's called the opposite, and we've got something written on the side that's called the adjacent. Now a lot of people in Australia learn what we call Sokotoa. I don't know what happens in other countries, we've got so many people watching. But we've got S for sine, now I'm going to split this up into the three. We've got S for sine, we've got C for cosine, and we've got T for tan. Now these numbers for these are stored in your calculator. Now most of the people in the world are going to use degrees. If someone was watching from France or French countries, they would use a thing called grads. Instead of having 90 degrees in an angle, like this one here has 90 degrees, they'll have 100 grads. Not going into there today. Be careful though, your calculators can be set on degrees, they can be set on radians, and they can be set on grads. So they have three situations, and sometimes people don't realise and have their calculator set on the wrong one. So I'm just going to talk about, this does not say hypotenuse. So if you wanted to, you could look over here and say, that one says hypotenuse, sine says hypotenuse, Cos says hypotenuse, tan doesn't say hypotenuse. So you could look for the one that doesn't say that. I do prefer to say we're looking for the opposite and the adjacent. So if we go over here, I'm going to tick every time that it says opposite, every time it says adjacent, every time it says opposite, and every one time it says adjacent. And which one's got the most ticks? And the one with the most ticks is Toa. So that means this question is going to be talking about the tan of the angle, we're talking about that angle there, the one where I'm standing is mini me. So we're talking about the tan of the angle, and you put this one on the numerator, and you put the other one on the denominator. So that's the numerator is the O, and I'm gonna bother writing opposite, and the other one's on the adjacent. Then the next bit is substitution, I always talk about substitution. So putting the one, two, three lots of information in the one, two, three place. Now most people have no trouble with that. So the 36 goes there instead of the theta sign. If you're not used to it, most people in the world use theta, which is the Greek letter, which is a circle with a cross across it. You want to be fussy, it's more of a squiggly cross, but most people just draw a circle with a line across it. So you've got that, and then the opposite becomes the letter X, and the adjacent gets the number 11. And by then, you've nearly got the question done. The only thing you have to do is solve the equation. Now, I've always thought about solving the equation. Get rid of the fractions first, wherever you can. So how do you get rid of a divide by 11? We times this side by 11. We times that side by 11. 
Now that is a leavened cancel, and the whole goal of solving an equation is to get x by itself. So we've got x by itself. Now I'm going to bother to write for a moment that x is 11 times y, and you don't have to write times, 11, 10, 36. Now that's what we call the exact answer. The moment you put in your calculator, you get the approximate answer. Now I've got the approximate answer written up here to save myself using the calculator, and it's 7.99197. Now, a lot of people will say, don't write all the decimals, or your teacher will say things like write two decimal places. So if I chopped it off there, and I used the peekaboo method, meaning my peekaboo method, so you've got 7.99, and you're looking for the next number. If the next number is big, you'd round up. If it's small, you don't round up. So one's a small number. So because that one's a small number, it stays as 7.99. Now, in the test that I have, even with my kids on Monday, it'll talk about... Uh, writing the answer to two decimal places. Now, if these were metres, you'd have to write, normally in most schools, you have to write metres, and a lot of people will say, used to say, you'd write 2 dp for two decimal places. So for number two, here's mini me again, and I'm looking across, and when I look across, I'm looking across to the opposite, and then the other one over here is really obvious. Now, a lot of people still have, sometimes have trouble, it's the longer side. You can see that that side there is longer than that one, and it's longer than that one. So that's the longer side. It's the one that's opposite, or goes across from the angle. It's almost like the right angle points to it. So if anyone had doubt in their mind, we've got those bottom views. So if we go back over to here, and the tick method I use. Now a lot of you don't need this much detail. So if you want to fast forward through and look at some of the others, that's okay. So we've got the over, opposite and the HRI bottom views. And we get two ticks there. We don't need to bother ticking the others. Most people will look at it and just go and see opposite on the hypotenuse. So now if I write up the rule for sine rule, uh, for the, not sine rule, sine ratio, we write that sine theta equals the over opposite over h hypotenuse. I'm not going to write the rest of that out. So our angle is 61, so you've got three things for three places, three things for three places, and let's have a look at what we've got. You end up with a six over the x. Now here's where people come in. I'm stuck now. I'm going to nag about, nag about, nag about. The X is on the bottom. On the bottom. It's on the denominator. So whatever we're doing, that X is on the denominator. That does not, sorry, pen just dropped. It doesn't work the same as if the X is on the numerator. On this one, the X is on the denominator. Denominator, sorry. So the calculations of that are very different. So the X is on the bottom, the X is on the bottom. Now, I keep talking about get rid of fractions first. So if I times this side by x, I probably need to get rid of that. Looks a bit confusing. The x is on the bottom. So the x is on the bottom, you get rid of it by times by x on that side, and we times by x on this side. And what are we left with? Let's have a look what happens. The x is cancelled now. Some of you all know the shortcut, or you've been told the shortcuts. So we now have x sine 61 degrees equals 6. Now, how do I get rid of that sine 61? It's married to the x of the multiply. How do we get rid of a multiplied by sine 61? Best way, easiest way is divide by sine 61. If I do it for one side, you can go back to my equation videos, you can do it the other side. Oh, guys, I've got so many playlists on equations, you can go look at those. And then they cancel out, and you're left with just the x. Now, the good part again, I've written the answer up here for number two, and we've got... 6.86012. Most people again will say they want the answer correct to one decimal place. Let's make this one say, let's make it one decimal place. Let's have a look what's going on there. Think of a method. Is it going to stay 8 or is it going to become a 9? So the next number is big, so it's not going to stay 8. It's actually closer to 6.9, but it is the 6.8. And of course, if this was centimetres, you'd write the centimetres. Okay, number three. I think in many ways this is the easiest of the lot. So up here now, I'm going to put mini me up here. And I'm looking across that way again. And I'm looking across to the opposite. And right next to this angle, next to the angle. At this time, we're trying to find the angle. This one here is called the A for adjacent. I can put ABJ. So I'll go back over here again, up to my soccer tower. We're using the letters O and the letters A. So really, I'm just looking through here. Does that say O and A? No. Does that say O and A? No. Does that say O and A? Yes. So it's those two there. 
So it means that we end up with a 10 quotient again. So the first one was a 10, second one was a sine, third one turns out to be a 10 theta. And again, we're talking about three things for three places. So I've got 10 theta, we're trying to find the angle. Now if you wanted to, you could draw up the triangle that's 14 centimetres long, draw it up as 23 centimetres long, and make sure it's the right angle, and you could just measure the angle with a protractor, but no one wants to do that. We want to calculate it more accurately and be able to calculate it very, very easily. So that's, what do we have? We have the opposite goes on the top. So I've seen so many students write that upside down. Now, what do you do? Your calculator has a button called 10, and the button called 10 has the answer stored for the angle for that size triangle, which is pretty incredible. Got everything stored in there, or calculates everything in there. The answer to that one is 58.6713 degrees, and of course, that's incredibly accurate. We're not worried about that in the level of accuracy. So if I said one decimal place accuracy, we'd be talking about 58 point. Again, look at the first number, we will it stay a six or go to a seven. The next number is bigger, that means it's closer to seven, it's 58.7 degrees. A lot of people would actually accept 59 degrees, depending on your school and what your teacher wants. Normally I'd probably go myself to one decimal place, this gives it a bit more accuracy. Now the reason I've done number four is that these are all written the same way, so they can be written any way at all. Let's have a look at this one here. I'm going to go back to me doing mini me. So there's me, mini me. Now I always put mini me at this angle. But by the way, if I had two angles written there, I could put me here or I could put me up there. So it's up to you where you pick, but most of the time, for example, on this one, we know that's 54. If you want to, you could put me over here because you can very easily work out that those two angles have to add to 90 because it's a right angle triangle. So we've got 90 over there, so there's 90 left for those. So if you prefer sometimes to do it a different way, just pick the other angle. Let's have a look at what we've got here then. That means I look across to the opposite. There's nothing written there, that's just question four. Next to me is the adjacent, and then the one that's the longest, the one that goes across from the right angle, is the hypotenuse. So this time we're looking for the letters A and H. So if we go back over here, we've got the, there's the A and the H there. So this time we're talking about a cosine question. So what I tried to do in the question is I gave you three different cases, and I want to make sure you see a sine question, a cosine question, and a tan question. So this one's going to be the cos of theta. I'll put a line and get that out of the way. The cos of theta is, this time it's the adjacent. Adjacent goes on the top and hypotenuse goes on the bottom. And then you put the three numbers in the right place. By the way, I've had students who really, really struggle with this. It took them a long time to come to grips with it. And at first, they could get the right, um, they could get the right form, whether it's sine, cos, or tan, and they could put the numbers in correctly, but then they had trouble with the rest. Good part was they scored marks for what they wrote anyway. So the nine goes on the top and the x goes on the bottom. Now when I did x on the bottom, so over here I named about x is on the denominator, x is on the bottom, x is on the denominator, x is on the bottom. That's the one that people most likely mess up with. I do see a lot of people write that as x over nine. It's like their brain thinks, and I have talked to people about it, many people, and they go, oh, the x had to be on the top. <laughs> and you go, no, 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 depends on what the triangle gives you. So there is a shortcut. I'm going to show you the shortcut this this way this time. If you're confident enough, when the x is on the bottom, it only works when, I'm going to nag about x is on the bottom. When x is on the bottom, when x is on the denominator, we're allowed just to swap places. Now, what do I mean by swap places? I might mean to put x where the cos was, and I've still got the nine on the top, and I put the cos where the x was. And what it does, it saves you one line of working out. If you go back up here, we had x on the bottom, and we ended up with sine being on the bottom. So instead of having x on the denominator, that thing over there, that calculation there, goes on the bottom over there. So if you're confident with that, I'd really love you to be able to do that. Of course, I've written the numbers down again. Nine on cos 54, and again, watch out, you've got your calculator set on the right setting. So that's 15.31171, and most people would say, a lot of teachers will say two decimal places. 
So I chop it off there, and if you've had trouble with rounding off, that next number is small, so it doesn't become a 3, 2, it stays a 3, 1. So our answer is 15.31, and if we had metres, we'd write it. Some people don't put the metres and centimetres and millimetres on on purpose, and if you wanted to, you could put just units. And again, if you wanted to, you could two DP for two decimal places. Oh, I hope it helps. Um, biggest thing about it is, if you're not quite comfortable with it, go back and watch it again later. But often give yourself a break. I've seen people who try to watch the videos two or three times in a night, and you go, wait a minute, your brain needs a chance to think about it, process it, even when you think you're not thinking about it. And you come back a day later or two days later, different if you're under exam or assessment pressure, but if you can, leave that little bit of time to come back to it and watch it again later. Now, the other thing you can do is go back, if you type in Robert Press Sweeps and Trigonometry, you'll see up comes my playlist. And you can go back, right back if you want to the beginning. My very first video is called Trigonometry 00. And it's a bit of a history of trigonometry and what it's all about. And then video 01, it just deals with not all these cases, just deals with one case. So if you're really struggling with it, go back and watch video 01 and then 02 and then 03, and you can work your way through. Oh, I hope it helps. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.